right, so we're going to work on our chapter two test review. Our chapter two test is on Wednesday. So to start off, let's talk about using mental math to find the sum of these three numbers. $4.26, $21.25, First thing you're going to do is line up your decimals all the way down. All right, now that we have them all lined up, we know that we're adding all the way across. So we have 6 plus 5 plus 3, that then gives us 14. 1 plus 2 plus 2 plus 7 is going to give us 12. Bring down our decimal. 4 plus 4 is 8, 9, 10. 1 plus 1 is 2, plus 2 is then 4. So our final answer $40.24. Let's go to the next problem. So on this problem, it's going to say, choose yes or no to tell if the number 8 and 37 hundredths will make each equation true or not. So I'm going to set up the equations first. Alright, so we're going to start with the first one. These boxes are our blanks where we're going to plug in this number. This is the number we're plugging in. So we have our 15 and we're minusing 8 and 37 hundredths. I like to put my decimal and add my zeros behind it just to hold my spot so I don't get confused. Then we know that we're going to have to 0 minus 7, we can't do that, we got to borrow from our 4. This will become a 10, then it will become a 9, this will become a 10. 10 minus 7 is 3, 9 minus 3 is 6, bring down that decimal. 4 minus 8, we can't do that. Our 4 becomes a 14, 14, and 14 minus 8 is 6. So it says we have 6 and 63 hundredths. Does this number match this number? No. So on that one, we would bubble the answer no. Next one. We have 5 and 26 hundredths plus our 8 and 37 hundredths. Set our problem up. 6 plus 7 is going to give us 13. 3 plus 2 is 5 plus 1 is 6. Bring down our decimal. 8 plus 5 is then 13. We got 13 and 63 hundredths. Is this number the same as this number? Yes. So for that one, we're going to write yes next to it. Let's work on our next one. 2 and 15 hundredths, plug in our number, which is 8 and 37 hundredths. This one's addition. We start off with our 5 plus 7, which is 12. 3 plus 2 is 5, bring down that decimal. 8 plus 2 is 10. Does this number match this number? 
10 and 52 hundredths and 10 and 42 hundredths. Two different numbers. That one is going to be nil. No. Next, we have 12 and 31 hundredths minus our number, which is 8 and 37 hundredths. Set our problem up. We see that we're going to have to borrow from the 3, make the 3 a 2. Our 1 becomes an 11. 11 minus 7 is 4. 2 minus 3, we can't do that. Our 2 becomes a 1. Our other 2 over here becomes a 12. 12 minus 3 is then 9. Bring down that decimal. 1 minus 8, I can't do that. My 1 becomes a 0. My other 1 up here becomes an 11. 11 minus 8 is 3. Does this number match this number? Yes. So on that one, we're going to write a yes next to it. So for this one, we're just plugging in numbers and checking to make sure it comes out correctly. All right, let's try another one. This one's a word problem. I'm going to read it out loud to you. Number seven. Sophie put two bookshelves in her room. The top shelf is three and 88 hundredths feet long. And the bottom shelf is four and 5,600 hundredths feet long. Part A. What is the combined length of the two bookshelves? Combined means add. So part A right here, we're going to add. I'm going to stack my numbers where the decimals match up. And I'm adding them. So I have my 8 plus my 6, which is going to give us 14. Then... I have my 8 plus 1, which is 9, and then 9 plus 5, which is going to give me 14 again, bring down my decimal. Then I have 1 plus 3, which is 4, 4 plus 4 is 8, 8 and 44 hundredths feet. That's the combined length. Then we have part B. Part B is asking us, how much longer is the bottom shelf than the top shelf? How much longer? They're wanting us to compare the two. We're going to have to subtract. So for part B, we're going to put the bottom shelf, which is 4 and 56 hundredths feet, on top. And then the other number on the bottom. This time, we are subtracting the two. 6 minus 8, I can't do that. My 5 becomes a 4. Then my 6 becomes a 16. 16 minus 8 is 8. 4 minus 8, I can't do that. Change that to a 3, I'm borrowing. And then my 4 becomes a 14. 14 minus 8 is 6. Bring down my decimal. 3 minus 3 is 0. 68 hundredths foot. All right, that would be part B's answer. Now, let's go on to another problem. Alright, so on this one it says a rectangular yoga studio is 25 and 15 hundredths feet long and 13 and 62 hundredths feet wide. Part A of our question is saying round the length and width to the nearest whole number. Then estimate the perimeter of the yoga studio. Write an equation to model your work. So first, they want us to round to the nearest whole number. So if we have 25 and 15 hundredths, my nearest whole number is my 5. I draw my arrow to my 1. I see my 1 is not bigger than a 5, so I scratch through it and scratch through everything else behind. 
So I'm left with 25. Then I take my 13 and 62 hundredths. My 3 is my nearest whole number. I draw my arrow to my 6. I see that my 6 is bigger than a 5. That means I can go ahead and add 1. I'm going to cross through that 6 because I used it up. And I'm going to cross through my 2. My number then becomes 14. Now I'm not done yet. It wants us to set up our equation for perimeter. Well, that is going to be perimeter equals length plus width plus length plus width. Now, I'm going to set up my problem over here, 25 plus 14 plus 25 plus 14. Now I need to solve for my answer. So, I'm going to take my numbers and I'm going to stack them on top of each other. We know 5 plus 5 is 10. 10 plus 4 is 14. 14 plus 4 is 18. Write my 8 and carry my 1 to my top. 1 plus 2 is 3. 3 plus 2 is 5. 5 plus 1 is 6. 6 plus 1 is 7. 78, would, 78 feet would be my answer for part A. Now let's look at part B. Part B, it changed up the rules a little bit. It's saying round the length and width to the nearest tenth. Then estimate the perimeter of the yoga studio. We write your equation. This one wants the nearest tenth. So I'm going to write my 25 and 15 hundredths. My 1 is in the tenths place. I look at my 5. I see my 5 is 5 or bigger. That means I'm going to be able to come over and I'm going to be able to add 1. Then I used up that 5. I'm going to cross through it. My new number is 25 and 2 tenths. Next, I take my next number, 13 and 62 hundredths. My 6 is in the 10th place. I look to my 2. My 2 is not bigger than a 5, so I'm going to cross through it. My number becomes 13 and 6 tenths. Now I set up my equation for my perimeter. 25 and 2 tenths plus 13 and 6 tenths plus 25 and 2 tenths plus 13 and 6 tenths. Now I stack them on top of each other. I make sure that when I'm doing this, I'm lining up those decimals so I can make sure I get my answer correct in the end. Alright, now I have my addition sign here. 2 plus 2 is 4. My 6 plus 6 is 12. Now I'm going to add my 12 and my 4. 16. Carry my 1, put my decimal at the bottom. 5 plus 5 is 10, 10 plus 3 is 13, 13 plus 3 is 16. Don't forget my 1, 17, carry my 1. 1 plus 2 is 3, 3 plus 2 is 5, 5 plus 1 is 6, 6 plus 1 is 7. So my answer for part B is 77 and 6 tenths feet. Next, for part C. For this part, I'm going to erase this over here that's going into my part C so we can make sure we see everything still. Now, this one, it wants us to find the exact perimeter. So just find the exact perimeter and it does not want us to set up our equation. So we're going to take the exact numbers Remember, it's the perimeter, so we're going to add the length twice. Then we're going to add our width twice. Set up our equation, add our plus sign. We're going to take this slow so that we don't get messed up. 5 plus 5 is 10. 10 plus 2 is 12. 12 plus 2 is 14. 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3. Okay, so we have our 3. 6 plus 6 is 12. 12 plus 3 is 15. I carried my 1 to the top. I brought my decimal down. 5 plus 5 is 10. 10 plus 3 is 13. 13 plus 3 is 16. Don't forget my 1, 17. 
1 plus 2 is 3, 3 plus 2 is 5, 5 plus 1 is 6, 6 plus 1 is 7. So 77 and 54 hundredths. Now we're not done yet. It says ex Now it says which estimate is closer to the actual number? Is it this one when we round it to the nearest whole number, or is it this one where we round it to the nearest tenth? It's going to be when we round it to the nearest tenth, okay? So you're going to talk about how that one is, the one. The numbers rounded to the nearest tenth are closer to the actual, actual measurements. So on part C, it's going to ask you that part of the equation. Now remember, if we look back, in third grade, all the way back in third grade when we did area and perimeter, this is a slight review of that. Just now we have all these numbers and they're using decimals and they're trying to make it confusing, but we're not going to get confused. So this is our length, this is our width, our length, our width. Okay? Perimeter is when you add up all the sides. So length plus width plus length plus width. Area is when you take the length and you times it by the width. So remember, this is a review from third grade. Let's not get this mixed up, okay? All right, guys, I hope you do good on chapter two test.